Lisa and I, um, I'm a surgical teacher um, uh, within this trust um, and I'm helped by Chris Hall who's the urology lead um, and John Stratford who um, is our cameraman. Hello. <laughs> Today I, we would like to show you how to perform a catheterization in a female and a male model. So first of all you need to go away and wash your hands. Um, and then find a trolley. Now normally um, in, in a war situation or in theatres um, a trolley would be presented to you, it's set up, everything's on there um, but just in the odd case uh, that's not not so unusually um, you need to find a trolley and you need to clean it. So we use Chanel wipes for that, take one and then just wipe the top, make sure you get everything and wipe all the sides side, bin it, take another one for the bottom and the same, just wipe around and you're done, ready to go. Okay, so now we need to assemble your equipment um, and um, there, there is an equipment list that you can just see now, um, of which I would like you to take note. But we're going to go through all the items on there. Firstly, um, you will need a catheter pack, and um, Chris has brought the ones that are around um, in our trust. Um, these are the catheter packs that you'd find in the trust on all of the wards around the trust sites. Um, if you notice, they have everything in it, but if you notice right at the front, it will tell you what size gloves you have on. In case the ward doesn't have a pack with the correct size gloves for you, it's always a good idea to have some extra sterile gloves with you. So all of this goes under the trolley so you know where it is. So next you need is a catheter. Um, they come in different shapes um, and sizes. So. Um, but they have all got, all got the same uh, components uh, in them really in this trust. You check the size, the size is printed, you might not be able to see that um, clearly on the camera, the size is printed on the bottom of the catheter and that's really quite um, important to check. So for a female patient you would use a 12 um, French catheter and for a male patient a 14 French catheter initially. You can step up to a bigger catheter if you struggle, but probably not at your stage. Um, but that, that's, that's the way to go bigger rather than smaller um, if there's a difficult catheterization. There's also information about how much um, water does go into the balloon to fill the balloon. Um, and most catheters that you will encounter will have a pre-filled syringe with water with them. And that's quite helpful because that's the exact amount of water and then you don't have to worry about it um, that you overfill or underfill the, the, the balloon. Why is that important? When you take a catheter out um, then you, you obviously have to deflate the balloon and you know um, if, if, you, if you don't know how much water is in the balloon you're not quite sure you've completely deflated it and it can cause um, injuries if the balloon is still inflated and you pull. Also um, if you if you look at this, um, the catheter itself is in a further sleeve inside. So when I open this, the catheter still is protected extra, um, and we'll show you that a little bit later uh, in more detail. What you need for the catheterization um, is in cylinder gel as well. This comes in packs like this. So syringe filled with gel with a little bit of uh, liquid cane um, in it. Furthermore, you need this. So, sort of um, saline or water um, bags to clean, um, you know, as many as you need um, to use probably a good, good amount to start. Okay, um, Chris is going to talk to you about the catheter bag. Um, you also need catheter drainage packs. Um, there's several depending on the mobility of the patient or what the patient's having the catheter in for. Um, leg bags. Leg bags um, are obviously used a lot for the mobile patients. If you need a bed-bound patient, then you can go with a leg bag or a 
um, bag that attached to a catheter stand or a stand that attaches to the bed itself. If you've got patients where you need a strict fluid balance, then you go for a urom at there. I haven't got any with us, but they're available on the wards as well. And um, it is very important that you stabilise the catheter so that you don't cause any trauma, any fiction, any catheter hyperspadias by the catheter pulling on the patient's um, genital areas. So a lot around the trust, because the trust is latex free, we have latex free straps. Um, and we also have uh, some um, tube holders which are sticky so you've got to be really careful using those for any patients that have fragile skins. Last but not least, um, it's important to um, have this syringe around. It doesn't need to be, we don't have it packed serially but it, it, it does come obviously serial packed as well. You don't have to open it. Um, it's a catheter syringe, look at how it does, I look in the top. Um, and sometimes, you know, you need a little bit of, of, of suction to, to make the urine flow um, a start. So it's good to have this around as well. Ink pad. To protect the bed. And yes, you need an apron. Um, and the apron lives um, on the walls, in most walls. Um, you know, you get it from there. Okay, so um, Chris and I have relocated with our trolley and all the equipment to the patient's bedside. Um, we have introduced ourselves to the patient and um, uh, you know, explained again that we're now going to perform um, a catheterization. You should really always have a chaperone with you. Um, it, it's very unusual not to have somebody there and if you have somebody who helps you then that is a normal situation and it's also from a point of um, having all the equipment sterile much easier. So that is what we're going to um, show you and that is what we would like you um, to always uh, do having a second person there, um, you know the old dirty sort of hands person. So the first thing um, I've done after we've come here, we've used the hand gel again because we touched the curtain, you know, we put the trolley, we went maybe to the door or anything like that. Um, and after I've done that, I'm now going to open my um, sterile gloves and you can find um, any sort of surface to do that. I'm going to just put them here on my clean um, trolley and then just open them up. So you know, you're going to learn how to do this. I'm very old fashioned. I've learned the old way. You try and keep it on like this. And open up the, the other side. Being careful not to touch the inside. And then put it over your hand all the way up. And then from the sort of outside you pull it over and pull it up. And I've got sterile hands now. This can go in the bin, and Chris is now gonna sterilely hand me all the other equipment. There's the equipment pack, and again, I'm taking it back out. This is all sterile, put it in the middle. It's got a little triangle to open it up, and then try and just make yourself as big a sterile field as you can. Okay. So, in the pack, as you said. There's two other pairs of gloves just in case you need it. There's a little bin bag, which I'm going to put at the side of the trolley. Put it they don't hold much, so. I wouldn't necessarily trust them too much, but they're good for little bits. Okay, then you've got a, um, a sterile sheet that we're going to open a little bit later. And a second sterile sheet just for top and bottom. You also got 
This is an apron. You have got an apron here. How are you supposed to put that on before you open the pack? I don't know, but you have got a spare apron in here. You've got little um, cotton buds to, to wipe and a gauze. And very importantly, you've got this receiver. So if you've got a full bladder, um, you know, everything in the bed is going to overflow um, by the time you try and connect the catheter that you inserted with the catheter uh, draining back. So you might want to have this to just catch it all. So next step, I'm going to be given my water to clean and that goes in there nicely, yes, thank you. Now see, it does it, she holds it nicely up, puts all of it in. Basically, if you do it yourself, that's what you would do. Okay. And that just flips on. Okay, it's got the little cup. Open it up before you even start, so you know it's open. Can you just show their stickers on the catheter? They need to go on the notes. Um, so make sure that they're not thrown away. One of those needs to just go in the notes. That is the pre foot syringe, and that is the catheter inside the second sleeve. Now, there's a perforation line here in the sleeve. I don't know whether you can see that. And so, when you use the catheter, you can remove that bit of the sleeve first and keep the rest of the catheter in the sleeve um, for extra protection. Um, what I also do is I'll take that syringe out straight away because it's too much trouble at the time when you actually need it. That's easy. And again, I usually open that up so it's ready to use. Okay, now you're ready to face the patient. So put the trolley in a good position. Um, your helper is uncovering the patient and also using our oh, ink sheets on the trolley, please. A further ink sheet to protect the um, to protect the bed. female patient to just sort of you know open the spread the legs a little bit um, just like a gynecology um, examination most females will know exactly what to do anyway and then um, you will clean the area so take a cotton bud um, and just have a quick look at the anatomy so you've got labia majoris outside and then sort of the labia minor is here and then obviously towards the towards the perineum you've got the opening of the vagina and um, on the top you've got the clitoris and then between the clitoris and the vagina you've got um, the external meatus of the urethra okay um, and we're going to blend a picture of that in so then you start cleaning from the outside to the inside so um, I'm going to touch the patient, so these gloves afterwards will have to be um, changed. Right here. Take the cotton bud and then check with the patient that it's alright and just sort of wipe from the top towards the perineum backwards and then go away using one cotton bud at a time on the outside nicely downwards. Then gently spread the labia with one hand and then do the inside, one wipe from the top to the bottom and the other one. And then try and sort of gently in the inside sort of clean here. If you feel it's still 
quite dirty, you know, do you give it a wash before? Um, don't, don't accept it. Um, you have got somebody with you, you know, you can get a bit more water, you can get a bit more cotton wipes. Um, so after I gelled my hands again, um, I've put my second pair of sterile gloves on and magically now I've got a dirty and a clean hand. Obviously you don't have different pairs of gloves on um, and the same colour, it's just to show um, of how the technique works. So um, I now need to make a sterile field um, around the patient and for that um, I use this sheet. and put that um, under the patient. Right, now I'm inside the sheet and you can see how it sort of falls over a little bit and put it just under the legs so it's tucked in nicely. And take the other sheet and in this trust we've got this lovely sheet with a hole in the middle. If you don't have a hole, just um, put one sheet you know, on, over the top and then you know the, the sort of the, the middle bit is, is exposed or you could tear a little hole in the middle. Um, but yeah, we, we tend to use these ones and they protect everything quite nicely, leaving you a lot of space. The next step um, is to use the look anesthetic gel. Now, a female urethra is only three centimeters long about, so you don't really need to inject a lot of gel, um, but the air around it can be quite um, sensitive. So, you know, do use a lot, um, but you know, be aware where you use it. I'm going to use my dirty hand to touch the patient, checking with the patient that the patient's all right, gently spreading the labia, my ears, and my nose, and then, you know, while doing that, and then just putting a tiny little bit of gel um, around the external meatus, and then when I can see it also inside a little bit. Now I haven't used much here because there's a model and it blocks up the catheter, but feel free to use um, the whole syringe and then you gently let go. Okay. Now this is the time you've got to wait. The gel needs at least sort of three minutes before it has an effect and you know you want to make it as comfortable as possible. So do talk to the patient, warn the patient that there's just a bit of boring chatty time and then um, have a clock in sight. I've got one on the wall over there um, and you know measure yourself. Um, clinicians get almost quite impatient quite easily um, and then when it's two three minutes you can you can go on now remember my dirty hand so I don't really want to touch anything on the trolley with this hand if I can avoid it um, I cannot avoid opening my catheter sleeve with it but I'm not touching the inside at all so I told you about the perforation so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just pull on the top and then it should come off. It should doesn't. Yeah it does. And then you can see that's just the tip exposed there. Okay, so I'm gonna not take it out of the sleeve but touch it with the sleeve and whatever I do I'm not touching the tip with any of my hands clean or dirty. So I'm going back to the patient, gently spreading the labia mayors, find my external meatus and then try and insert the tip into that. Now this is actually easier on a patient, sometimes it's quite stiff in the model, but you should be gently able to, to roll, can you see that here, that I roll the catheter and push it forward. And remember, you only have about three centimeters to go, and you, just, you pull back the sort of sleeve while you go, not touching the catheter. So after about three centimeters, you would want to see the first urine coming into the sleeve. Okay. So regardless of whether you see the urine or not, um, I don't see it. That might mean that the bit of gel has blocked up the catheter. You insert the catheter full to the bifurcation as you can see here. Now, normally there would be free flowing urine, and I put this receiver underneath to see that. Okay, to fix the catheter in place now, I would have to inflate the balloon, but I have not seen any urine at all. So, 
I will never inflate the balloon because I don't know, at least in theory, where I am. Um, so one of the things to do now is to ask your assistant for the bladder syringe that we mentioned before. Right, so she's opened this sterilely um, and I use that and insert it here and then gently aspirate and there it is. After a little bit of um, aspiration with the bladder syringe there's now free flowing water coming out, this is what you want to see. Um, so I now um, know I'm in the right place um, and I will gently inflate the balloon to keep the catheter in place. I'm going to use the pre-filled syringe with the amount that the balloon holds and while I inject that it's very important that I double check with the patient that the, the patient has not got any pain or discomfort um, to make absolutely sure the balloon doesn't inflate in a place where it shouldn't be. So I do that gently there Okay, done. And then I'll pull the catheter back very gently. I'm sure that I've got just, you know, light resistance there. Don't yank it. And then my assistant on my new Sarah field has given me the range back. Put the cap off and then just connect it here. And as you can see, putting the cup off, putting it in, anything sort of connected with the with the entrance bits of the catheter, I've tried to use my, my clean hand. I would not use my dirty hand for that if I can at all avoid it. Right? So there we go. You should um Make sure the catheter bag is closed there, okay, that it drains, drains freely into here. Um, you should measure how much water you've had in the receiver and document how much was in the bladder um, beforehand. So all that remains now is to clean up. Um, and we, you know, you make sure that the patient is nice and dry. There's this remaining gauze here that I now touched on a dirty hand, shouldn't have. Um, and just sort of wipe around here, wipe the excess gel off, and that goes away as well. And then you can just move the drapes. There's still the ink part in the bed. Um, and then, would you like to show how to do the catheter? Fixation strap. Yep. The catheter fixation strap before you actually leave the patient should be attached to the top of the patient's thigh. Um, most common one used in this trust is the G strap, which looks like that. The strap there is a what would you call it? A further smaller strap. This has Velcro on it and this wraps around the catheter itself, so stabilising it so there isn't any pull on the catheter. So you'd actually open that up. There's a loop there to thread it through and then thread it back through again so it's just stabilising the catheter there on the patient's leg. Then this will actually wrap around the patient's thigh and then again like that. This should be changed for seven days actually when the patient's catheter bag is changed. So it just gives you an idea. Um, patient go in and out of the bath, shower, washable. Okay. So all that then remains is taking the other ink pack out, making sure the bed's nice and dry, covering the patient back up. Um, and as a last very, very important step, aside from cleaning away your mess from the bedside, is to document exactly what you've done uh, using either Nerve Centre or a documentation sheet, um, which you can see on the screen right now. Okay, so this is the male catheterization.
conversation. Um, I've just um, sort of come into the room with my trolley, set up, um, I've introduced myself, I've got my chaperone with me, um, and I'm, I'm going to gel my hands again before I touch the patient. Um, and then, as it's a male patient, um, we need to help a little bit with positioning because they don't usually know how to do that. So, um, we'll ask him to sort of uncover him gently and get the claws off, obviously, um, and then, you know, explain to sort of bend the knees up and then let the knees flop outside so you've got a nice um, wide area to work with. And then we've put an anchor sheet again underneath the patient to. Um, protect the bed um, from it. First bit to notice here, um, is the patient circumcised or not? So that's going to be really, really important. If you've got a patient who is circumcised, you don't need to bother that much. The glands are exposed, um, you know, and, and there's no foreskin that can uh, potentially sort of swell up and tighten sort of on the, um, on the shaft um, and making the glands swell up. People who are uncircumcised, you will have to retract the foreskin, um, and it's very, very important that you first of all clean under it because there's a lot of gunk there uh, usually, and that you also at the end of the procedure remember to um, sort of put the foreskin back in place, covering the glands uh, to prevent any paraphimosis. Okay, now we'll cover our patient again. We're going to um, get the trolley ready I'm going to have all the clean bits so I'm going to have sterile gloves on for this and Chris is going to hand me all the stuff I need anything, make a sterile area, get everything out of here, there's my sheet for the bottom, there's my sheet with a hole for the top, gloves. need a little bit more water for men um, you know I, I would probably take you know if this wasn't the simulation I would take um, three four bags of water and um, there's a, a bigger area to clean it's the gel remember put the top off then it's done and it's done in a clean way see Chris has kept this a sheet with all the information and that needs to go in the notes even if you put the catheter documentation on nerve center that will still have to go in the notes so we've got everything so we're ready to go um, I'm coming to the patient right now first thing again I need to clean the patient so um, I will warn the patient if I have to retract the foreskin but I'm gonna do just that now So gently touch the penis and then gently retract the foreskin just by sliding it backwards a bit like this. Okay. And then what you're going to do is 
you'll have to clean from the top downwards the shaft. So you start where the meatus is and you clean downwards and then this goes away. And so you go all the way around nicely. around the glands here. That is quite often where a little bit you know of sort of gunk has collected. And then the very last bit you've got you try and sort of gently spray the external meatus and just clean in there. And then that goes away. Alright. Okay. So um, now that I've touched that again I let go of that I've got to have um, I've got dirty hands, dirty gloves. So I'm going to take my gloves off, put them there, and I gel my hands again. Okay. Right. So I've changed my gloves. Yeah, magic. I've got a dirty and a clean hand again. Um, you're just going to have the same pair of gloves, of course. Um, now, we need to make a sterile field. So again. Use the bottom tray and just gently put it underneath the patient, tuck it in a little bit. And then we've got the green tray with the hole. And you can see, and sort of go around there, making a nice sterile field for you, having access to all the bits you need to. Okay, now. Do you use a little bit of gauze if you want to? It sometimes gives you a bit of better grip. And then um, warn the patient that you now put the gel in. I would use for a male urethra that's quite a bit longer than female. I would probably use two uh, Instilla gel just to start with. Um, and you know it makes it a lot easier um, to insert the catheter. And then I'm also more sure that the gel actually reaches the end bits of the urethra and it's deciding it, making it more comfortable for the patient. This is a model. You will not see me use a lot because it does block um, the model up if I use it. But just be aware and I would really advise you to use the two. So you now gently grab the penis and then sort of lift it up a little bit more straight. We want the gel to sort of, you know, go downwards. And then I will put a little bit of gel around the Examine me out just here, checking the patient's comfortable, and then saying, might sting a little bit, gently inserting the syringe there, and then injecting the gel. Now, while you do that, you know, take your time, and then you can also, can you see that, sort of close the urethra with the other hand a little bit, just so the gel doesn't come out, and take some time putting all the gel in, as I say. This syringe, I would then sort of put it down, take the other syringe that I prepared and inject them. Don't let go of the uh, penis at that point. Um, and if you just let go, the other gel will just run out. So you're going to just warn the patient now. It'll take two, three minutes at least for the clocking on the wall um, um, inside, or your assistant will tell you and just you know, talk about the weather or whatever. But you've got to wait this time. So once the time's over, gently release the penis there. There might be a little bit of gel coming out. Now this hand is my dirty hand now, so I'm trying not to touch anything on the trolley with it if I can avoid it at all. But I do have to um, open the catheter. So again, there's a perforation here. So we'll just take the top of the sleeve off um, and take that away. Now nothing touches this. And then you get ready by again lifting up the penis gently and then going sort of in that direction straight down. So you go about two, three centimeters at, um, at one go at a time and try to roll straight away. So right there, so roll it down and then you let go, pull the sleeve back a little bit. Turn again and twist. Over 
was taken with the patients from the table. Got the shuffle on there as well. Okay. So we now reach the bit where the prostate is, and that's the most um, most um, difficult bit. And again, I probably pull the sleeve back a bit too far, so I'm gonna just get a bit higher again, not to touch the catheter. So just pull a little bit on the penis very gently and roll around and that should bring you around the prostate. At this point, if you struggle and you can't do it or the patient has any discomfort, at this stage you need to abandon the procedure and ask somebody more senior to come and help you. This is actually a lot easier. I've not got much gel on here. So. Right. It's very important again that you insert the catheter completely to the bifurcation get the receiver ready and then you know you would normally want to see free flowing urine You're not very lucky today and um, main important thing would you inflate the balloon now no not ever because you don't know where you are could I have a please uh, catheter syringe So I've been sterilely giving um, this catheter syringe and then a little bit of aspiration and indeed urine is coming out and there's free flowing urine. Sometimes it just needs that little bit of extra suction. Okay, so I'm happy now. There's free flowing urine. I know I'm in the right place. Now I can inflate the balloon. Not before, ever. I've got the pre filled syringe here. And I check with the patient, there's no discomfort, there's no pain when I inflate the balloon. There can be pain and discomfort. Don't continue inflating the balloon. Stop. Okay? Um, you, you can still be in a wrong position and cause damage. Okay. Once I've done that, I'll then gently pull back. I have a little bit of resistance there. Okay, right, so I'm going to have the catheter back again, and that will be connected. Okay, and that's that done for the time being. Right, so now the most important thing to do now is to remember the foreskin and retract it back. Okay, otherwise you can see, you know, it would sort of cause like a constriction there um, and it's completely avoidable to get a power phimosis uh, on a patient. Again, this is a model, so you wouldn't do that like this. And the patient just slide it forwards. Okay, I've got one more gauze here. Clean nicely around, any extra gel. And that's the catheter inserted. All that remains now is again to um, clean up around the patient, uh, make sure the bed's nice and dry, reposition the patient to a more comfortable position. We have shown you how to attach the strap around the thigh um, so that there's no uh, friction injuries um, or pulling injuries from the, from the catheter. And then go away, document what you've done um, in the notes.